Hey what's up everybody, thank you for checking this video. If you want to see more, please leave a like and subscribe. But even if you don't, enjoy and happy coding! From a developer that hates plugins, here's a plugin that doesn't suck. Elementor is a live page builder for WordPress. It's amazing, it's open source, faster than the competition, easy to use, it doesn't require any coding for anyone to just build a beautiful page. I think I'm gonna say it, yes, I'm gonna say it. It's the best page builder for WordPress. I said it. It's totally free for you to use it, download it and install it on all the websites that you want and if you really really like it you should consider buying the pro version that it's not expensive at all and it comes with a tons of new features. Click the link in the description below the video to learn more. Welcome to another tutorial. In this episode we're gonna take a look on how to generate a shortcut to allow the user to print a form to submit a testimonial. So this tutorial is gonna be split in two sections. The first one that we're gonna tackle right now will take care of all the PHP stuff, so generating the shortcut and printing the actual form, while the second one will take care of the front-end part of a form submission and we're gonna do everything in ES6 and vanilla JavaScript, so no jQuery involved. But let's get started. Inside the register method, right after we set the shortcut page that we did last time, we can use another hook from WordPress to generate the shortcut. And the hook is simply add underscore shortcut, open and close the regular brackets and semicolon at the end, always remember that. The first attribute is the actual unique name, the, let's call it the unique identifier of our shortcut. So what the user needs to write on a page or on a post in order to print this shortcut. And we already defined that in the previous lesson, so if we access our testimonials shortcut subsection, here we said that the testimonial form sh shortcut should be testimonial-form, so let's copy these format here and let's paste it as a first attribute, but of course you can change it and use whatever you want. And the second attribute is as usual our array, where we pass as a first parameter the instance of this class and as a second parameter the name of a method that we want to tap. And let's be consistent and call it testimonial underscore form, so it's going to be really really simple. And as I said in the previous lesson I don't want to jump back and forth up and down, so I'm going to write my testimonial form method right here, but you can put it wherever you want. Public function, testimonial form, regular brackets and curly brackets, perfect. Here now instead of writing inline the form we can do something really really simple. We can require one time one simple PHP file that contains all our form and then return it in a clean way with ob start and ob get clean. So let's write first ob start and this ob start will tell PHP to read whatever things we're gonna write, read whatever things we're gonna include, but don't execute it, just don't print it directly in this page, don't echo it directly in this page, but wait for the code to tell you how to handle, to tell PHP how to handle this page, because if we do something like require underscore one and we require whatever template is gonna be inside here, if we don't do this ob start and then we return the ob underscore get underscore clean and these are underscore and semicolon at the end. If we don't do that and we just simply require once, this testimonial form method will directly require that specific template that we're gonna specify without waiting for us to actually call the method and return it when, when, whenever we need it, we actually need it in that page. So whenever we need to print HTML that could probably contain some PHP executions or some PHP functions, it's always better to wrap it around the OB start and then return Turn the clean version of that specific template. But let's continue. Here we can do exactly the same that we always did in our callback. So using this instance of the plugin underscore path, we can tap the specific path of our plugin and then require a template that we don't have yet, but let's call it for now contact-form.php and we can save it. So now we should create that specific template, so let's scroll down to the templates folder and let's create a new file called, of course, contact-form.php 
And this contact form, I already have it because I don't want to rewrite HTML every time, all the time. I basically copied this contact form from the sunset theme. So if you want to do it, you can copy paste it from this very own repository. You can find the link in the description below this video, or you can grab a generic HTML form with a name, an email, and a message for our testimonial, and that's it. This form is already set for the next lesson in terms of dealing with error messages and then dealing with user experience response. So when the user is submitting the form or the message was successfully sent or when there's a problem in submitting the contact form, this form already has all that we need. So if we save this and we go back in our backend, we refresh, of course, nothing happens because our uh, testimonial form uh, method is not affecting the backend, but it affects only if we use the shortcode of the frontend. So let's do it. Let's copy this shortcode. Let's create a new page and let's call this page guest book or something like that. Do you remember when guest books were the amazing thing that everyone had? Yeah, I remember. I come from a time where a guest book on a website was a thing. So yes, I'm that old. But let's paste just the testimonial form sh shortcode here and let's publish this page. If we click on view page, oh, we got an error. Uh, seems like template, template, uh, uh, let's check. Okay, it's templates, not templates. Sorry about that. Little typo here. So if we save and we refresh, there we go. We have our beautiful form that automatically is styled and it's grabbing the style of the 2017. But of course, if you're using a, like a blank form or whatever, it's not going to grab any style. It's not going to have any style. But this is kind of okay looking, right? Of course, if we click submit, nothing happens. We have a required, but the particular things of this contact form is that doesn't have any action. Everything will be managed via JavaScript with an Ajax request to our admin Ajax. So we can validate everything. We can block everything. We can do some uh, safety things in both server side and client side. It's going to be really, really good. The last thing that I want to do in this tutorial is that because all this form will be managed via JavaScript, I need to enqueue a JavaScript file in order to trigger all this kind of stuff and use the methods with a JavaScript file. But the fact is that I don't want to enqueue a JavaScript file in the entire website if the user uses the plugin. That's something that I really, really hate. When I activate a plugin, automatically a bunch of JavaScript and CSS and other things get enqueued in my source code and I don't have control in that. It's a lot of blow the things that probably most likely are not even useful if I'm not using a specific section of that plugin. So in our case, in the testimonial form, I don't want to enqueue a JavaScript file to handle the testimonial form if I'm not using the contact form. So the JavaScript should be be enqueued only if we're printing the contact form. So why don't we do it directly in this method? Let's open once again our file view and let's create a new JavaScript script inside our JS folder. So new file and let's just simply call it form.js. And if we open the form.js here, I want to do a little test. I want to just create a document event at event listener. And let's say that I want to trigger whatever it's inside this event listener only when the DOM content is loaded. This is a default event of the document of the DOM. So we can listen in our document for that specific method. When this happens, it means that the entire content is loaded. And when the entire content is loaded, we can function this thing and pass the event of the loaded. And then inside the curly brackets, we can just simply console log something like ready, just to say that our script is properly enqueued and it's ready when the actual DOM is fully loaded. So now let's go back in the testimonial control and right after our required ones of the PHP file, we can also enqueue or simply echo inline the script. And this feels kind of dirty, but it's actually not because it's totally fine to have an inline script loading only when the user is using the testimonial. That means that script will not get loaded a thousand times in all the pages, all the posts. It's going to be loaded only when the contact form is required and it's necessary. We're not going to slow down the user's website. So inside an echo, let's write the usual script. 
and then source. And inside the source of this script, I wanna use the double quotes once again, but as you notice here, if I'm using the double quotes, the echo will be interrupted. So in order to avoid the interruption of the echo, I can uh, type before the double quotes of the source, a simple backward slash. The backward slash will say to our echo script, to not consider this as a wrapper of the echo, but as HTML elements of the actual source script that we're writing. So here we can uh, write the same, but instead of using the plugin path, because this path is actually the local path of our file, we wanna use the plugin URL, because that's how JavaScript gets loaded, via URL. So let's say, let's tap this instance and print the plugin underscore URL, and then after that, the usual forward slash, and then the location of our JavaScript file that it's inside is source, JS, and then form.js. Close the script, tag, save it. Let's go back in our front end. Let's refresh. Visually nothing happened, but if we open our code inspector, Look at that, if we open our console, we got the ready message, that is the exact same message that we wrote in our form.js, and if we wanna double check, this is ready, something like that, so if we refresh, boom, this is ready, and that's perfect. So basically in this super quick tutorial, we set up a really simple form that it's already that looks awful because it's printing all our information, it's printing all the error message and the feedback messages that will not happen because we need to style these with CSS and make these interactive and dynamic with JavaScript, but at least we have a fully built HTML form that gets dynamically printed thanks to a testimonial form shortcode and inside that it gets also printed and echoed the form .js. This is the perfect setup for our next lesson where we're gonna take a look on how to safely submit this form in vanilla JavaScript to our WordPress backend and safely store all the information that the user types, name, email, and message inside our testimonial custom post type. Well, it's pretty much it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I talk to you in the next one.